Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Friday Ramblings. And we are still rocking the skull because it is still the Halloween season. That's right. We are continuing to let the spooky into your life because it's only episode two of five. Counting down to All Hallows Eve. For those of you who like to go ahead and spoil life by not just reading the titles, but even pondering what the titles refer to, let's just go ahead and get to the nitty gritty. Yes, we are discussing the Child's Play movie franchise. Or is it just movies? We'll have to discuss that. That's right, folks. It is very well-timed for in 2021 to discuss all things child's play. First and foremost, let's go ahead and get this out of the way due to the renaming of the later films in the franchise. The Child's Play series is also known as the Chucky series. I am generally going with Child's Play because that is how the series was originally named. And I did start on the earliest movies with my own watching of it, so there you go. I'm going with Child's Play to refer to the entire franchise. So, let's break down exactly what Child's Play is. Before we get into the individual movies, and maybe some other stuff inspired by the movies. Child's Play franchise focuses on a serial killer who, in order to prevent himself from dying, uses voodoo magic to place his soul inside the nearest convenient object, which happened to be a child toy, specifically a red-headed doll. He then took the name Chucky and throughout these several films has begun a campaign of terror sometimes centering around trying to get back in a human body if not specifically his own but sometimes just plain wreaking havoc and taking advantage of his very innocent looking and not as harmless as initially believed current toy based form now it should be noted that Let's go ahead and break it out there again for people who are not familiar with the Chucky character. While I do say doll, we're not talking about some little, like, you know, 8-inch Barbie. But one of the larger, you know, two-handed... See, I really wish I had a reference pick for this, or a reference visual aid for this. But, unfortunately, I do not own any official uh, Child's Play merchandise. But we are talking about the, essentially, life-size dolls. So... Chucky himself is multiple feet tall and does have a little bit of mass to his plastic form. As far as who created Chucky, we are going to knock this out real quick. The screenwriter for every single Chucky film has been Don Mancini, whose official birth certificate name is George Donald Mancini. Mancini also directed the most, the three most recent films in the series. Although the earlier films were all directed by um, different people. The first one was done by Tom Holland, who was also assisting on screenwriting duties before John LaFia, Jack Bender, Ronnie Yu. Now, there's been a few different producers that have assisted... In the later films, um, Grace Gilroy, Corey Senega, um, Ogden Gavinsky. However, with the exception of Child's Play 3, which was produced by Robert Latham Brown, all other Child's Play slash Chucky films have been done by David Kirshner. So, in many ways, he can be credited just one step below Dan Mancini for being the brains behind the madness as far as your distributors first child's play film was distributed by mgm united artists two three and four would be distributed by universal pictures five would be distributed by 
Rogue Pictures slash Relativity Media before Universal Pictures came back to do 6 and 7. So, good times. A lot of general consistency in your creative masterminds behind the films. So, let's bust it out and break down the individual movies with a little bit of personal input. Quit and make sure I've got everything set up here. Good. We have our lovely notes. All right. Uh, yeah, you do hear a little bit of spooky storm in the background because, as I said, this is the season of scary. If you're going to talk crazy slashers and killers, better time to talk about it than when the storm is pounding at your door. Little ambiance. Like the Scully shirt. Ambiance. Thematic. Speaking of thunder, lightning, and other great spooky special effects, the original Child's Play film came out in 1988 and starred Katherine Hicks as Karen Barclay, single mother, trying to do the best she can. Chris Sarandon as Officer Mike Norris. Alex Vincent in his first film performance as main character Andy Barclay. And Brad Dorff as Charlie's, Charles Lee Ray, as well as the voice of the doll form of Chucky. See, Charles, Chucky, it makes sense. The film takes place in Chicago where, as we said before, serial killer and voodoo practitioner Charles Lee Ray is mortally wounded after being shot in the chest by Officer Mike Norris and transfers his soul via a voodoo ritual into a child-sized doll. The doll is found by a homeless peddler and sold to Karen Barclay who gives it to her son Andy as a birthday gift. Chucky then proceeds to begin killing various people who try to interfere in his attempts to earn the trust of Andy Barclay, who, every time Chucky kills somebody, tries to explain to people that Chucky did it. Chucky manages to hunt down his old partner, and as well as his mentor in all things creepy voodoo magic, in order to find what he needs to perform the ceremony a second time and put his soul into the body of Andy Barclay. It is revealed by his mentor who does not approve of the serial killer ways that the longer Chucky stays in the doll form, the more mortal and vulnerable Chucky will be. This leads to the film's climax where He is burned to a crisp, shot to pieces, and finally, when his, some of his pieces insist on still crawling around because, again, eh, pseudo-magic doll form, he is finally shot in the heart. Film, like any good classic horror film, leaves on a bit of a cliffhanger as the frightened and traumatized Andy believes that despite the multiple pieced remains of Chucky being no longer moving, that it is not over because he has encountered evil and evil never dies. <laughs> the film did pretty good in theaters and attracted a bit of a cult audience, although we're not going to sit here and pre pretend it was the highest grossing film of 1988 by any means. It was enough to get um, a sequel made. However, as I said, it would have to jump studios from MGM to Universal. It did pick up several Saturn Awards for Best Actress in Katherine Hicks, Best Horror Film, Alex Vincent getting Best Performance by a Younger Actor, and Tom Holland and Dan Mancini getting Best Writing. Excuse me. They were nominated for all those four, 
Catherine Hicks was the only one that won for Best Actress. Mm. So, there you go. This is a good start to a bigger franchise. Now, next up we have Child's Play 2, which as I said is the first of them to be distributed by Universal Pictures. And this came out two years later in 1990. As we also said before, this film was directed by John LaFia this time. Alex Vincent reprises his role as Andy Barclay and Brad Dorff returns as the voice of Chucky respectively. Andy is now living in foster care. It was implied his mother was sent to an insane asylum after the events of the previous film. And shortly after landing with a new foster family... Or not. Sorry, I was kind of making sense there. Let me rephrase that. After moving in with a new foster family, the doll's manufacturer decides to take a positive corporate stance and rebuild the doll to prove there is nothing wrong with the original doll and as such their iconic good guys brand as due to the events of the first film and the rumors that the doll had something to do with the murders most people believing it was the humans involved in the film but that the doll was some sort of trigger for the murderous psychosis the company has lost a lot of money by having their good guy b dolls brand tarnished. So they rebuild the Chucky doll. Unfortunately, a freak electrical malfunction ensures that Chucky's soul would revive in the doll as well. in the doll as well. And he manages to stalk Andy down in order to once again attempt to transfer his soul from his doll body. As even though he has been technically given a new body this go around, he is still held by the original voodoo curse and only has so much time before the doll form becomes the only form he can possess. Now, he does track Andy down after committing a few murders and manages to isolate Andy in after-school detention. Unfortunately, it fails. Eventually, Andy lets his foster sister, Kylie, played by Christina Lee, in on the secret of Chucky, although she is an Kyle is initially, or Kylie, again depending on your pronunciations, is initially hesitant to believe it. She, uh, she finds the proof she needs to become Andy's ally. Now again, I'm going to skip over a lot of the middle of the movie because I do want to encourage you to watch these movies. I don't want to give you full plot spoiler breakdowns. Andy and Kylie eventually get to the Play Pals factory where Chucky was reborn. Where in a final fight, they manage to burn Chucky with a vat of molten plastic before eventually going for the double whammy and Andy and Kylie shove a, a pneumatic air hose into Chucky's body, resulting in the head and body cavities filling with air and exploding. Now, there is a televised only alternate extended ending, meaning that it was not shown in the original theatrical film or most uh, home releases but was shown in the made-for-television version. Of course, these days, with DVD, Blu-ray releases, and all those extras. I'm sure it is on one of those releases, which, yeah, it's one of the things I prefer about the home video 
DVD Blu-ray technology versus streaming. You watch a movie on streaming, you don't always get those awesome deleted scenes and alternate ending stuff that come in on those wonderful extra discs. But that's my personal rant and preference here. In the televisor only alternate extended ending, the vat of plastic is shown, really a chunk of Chucky's head fell in after he was killed. It sinks to the bottom where a new head is formed, which gives an evil smile, hinting that things are not in fact over. Only one year later, we got Child's Play 3, which ends the classic trilogy, as this is the last film to be titled as Child's Play. This time, the film is directed by Jack Bender. Brad Dorff once again replies as his role as Chucky, while Alex Vincent was replaced as Andy Barclay by Justin Whalen, who, of course, has various other acting roles to his credit, including Jimmy Olsen, in the Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman show. As this time, it is a bit of a time jump, uh, timeline shenanigans, as they decide to, despite the movie being released in 1991, set it in 1998, eight years after the event of the second film, where Andy is now a teenager, and after battling various PR and letting time help people forget, the Good Guys factory is reopened and Chucky's remains are removed. Some blood from his human doll magic hybrid form drips into a vat of melted plastic being used to produce a new line of Good Guy dolls. Thus, Chucky returns in a new body. Going on a hunt for the now 16-year-old Andy Barclay, who is attending military school. While attempting to reach Andy, Chucky finds a new boy, Ronald Tyler, who is younger and is also attending the military school that Chucky shares his secret with, knowing that Andy is very aware of Chucky's shenanigans and schemes and is not an easy victim. Chucky attempts to take Ronald's body instead. However, Andy and Ronald team up to kill Chucky this time using, let's see, how did they kill him on this one? Let me get my notes here. Let's see. Alright, so Andy manages to use a knife to cut off Chucky's hand and part of his face before hurling him into a giant industrial fan which shreds him into pieces. Afterwards, police take Andy into custody for questioning about the various murders, having put two and two together that he has been involved in two other events of multiple homicide in his life and therefore is a person of interest, as the police like to throw terms around with. Now, Ronald Tyler would not reappear in the films in any major role, um, we also had Perry Reeves as Kristen De Silva, another ally of Andy and Ronald. Um, if you think you know that name, it is because she had a recurring role as Melissa Gold on the television series Entourage and Frank the Tank's wife in the 2003 comedy film Old School. So, hey, way to keep acting and kickstart your fame with a good old-fashioned horror film. Um... Catherine Hicks' character of Karen Barclay does have a pseudo-appearance as a photograph Andy keeps with him while attending the military school. So, you know, good continuity note. Now, as I said, this ended the classic um, Child's Play trilogy because the films would sit until 1998, amusing since that's when the third film took place in its fictional world, when they decided to give the films a bit of a tonal adjustment, playing up the fact that Chucky had a little bit of that classic Freddy Krueger wit to him. They went whole hog on that part, going for more of a horror dark comedy approach 
with the next few films, renaming them Bride of Chucky. Now, because Child's Play 3 took place in 1998 anyway, this film picks up a month after the events of Child's Play 3. Uh, Andy Barclay does not appear as the film focuses on Chucky and his ex-girlfriend Tiffany, who was an accomplice of Charles Lee Ray when he was a normal human. Tiffany manages to acquire Chucky's remains, stitches them together, and using a new voodoo ritual, revives Charles Lee Ray. Although, in this form, he now has a very scarred appearance, as this is the first time his body has been literally reassembled, as opposed to him possessing a newly formed good guy doll body. This forms the modern image that most uh, later franchise fans have of Chucky with the creepy, scarred, stitched up body. Chucky, in a bit of rage at being revived in a unsightly doll body, as opposed to being able to be human or just plain stay dead, you know, he's probably really sick of being a doll at this point, decides to kill Tiffany before transferring her soul into a bride doll in order to show her what it's like. However, the two end up deciding to play a little natural-born killers and go on a road trip full of homicide. Specifically, in order to track down the grave of his mortal human body, where Chucky needs to unearth it to get the voodoo amulet that is still on the body, which will help him override the curse and get a new human body. As I said, thematically, it's a running thing. Chucky wants a new body, despite, at various points in the movie, there's that creepy thunder again, uh, finding various advantages with his doll form and Tiffany herself, finding the killer doll thing to be quite a fun trip. However, amusingly, Chucky and Tiffany find out that being magical dolls, despite not being anatomically correct, they can actually uh, do what loving couples do in a physically intimate manner, and Tif the Tiffany doll gives birth to a new form of life, before Tiffany herself dies. Film ends on a bit of a open-ended approach. As with Chucky, who has been shot and stabbed himself multiple times, it is left up in the air as to whether the new baby, who is the first of this species to be properly born in the classic manner, and Tiffany have truly survived, and if Chucky will get revived again. However, six years later, I mean, whew, they're really taking their time developing these films at this point, which, honestly, I kind of prefer because I'd rather you take your time to make sure you got a script really worth doing than force out sequels just for the sake of riding a cash cow. So, you know, good, good on them waiting a good six years. Really develop the script nicely. We got Seed of Chucky, which is the fifth installment in the series. And is the first film other than the original Child's Play not to be distributed by Universal. Chucky and Tiffany's child, who apparently is two twins, one of each of the classic male-female gender roles, identities, whichever the proper phrase in this context would be. I admit I'm not always completely 100% up to speed on the preferred labeling for all uh, social groups, but... Either way, their child is 
quite literally both male and female as there are two souls, Glenn and Glenda, inhabiting the one doll. Now, it does take the same six years that the movie took to make for the Glenn Glenda doll to find the remains of his parents, or her parents, depending on which one's in control at the time. Where there is a bit of family disagreement as Chucky wants to encourage his child to take after him in the murder spree, whereas Tiffany, finding a maternal instinct, would prefer that they try to settle down a little bit. And in a lovely meta joke, Jennifer Tilly, who portrayed Tiffany's human form in Bride of Chucky and voiced the Tiffany doll form, returns as famous Hollywood actress Jennifer Tilly, who is picked by Tiffany to be a new body. Whereas Chucky wants to inhabit uh, bleh, Jennifer Tilly's buddy, Redman. Chucky and Tiffany make their plans to transfer their souls. And in order to make sure that there is a human child for their Glenn Glenda child to inhabit as well. And yes, folks, I'm going to have to get in this point. If you're squinky, you might want to skip the next couple seconds of video. Tiffany uses a turkey baster to inseminate Jennifer Tilly with Chucky's semen. Okay, we're past it. Welcome back for those people that mm, don't like to hear weird oddball details. Ultimately, things get crazy. Everybody starts dying left and right as murder psychos start harming each other and good innocent humans try to harm murder psycho dolls. Jennifer gives birth to twins, a boy and a girl. And when it's all said and done, Chucky is assumed killed. Tiffany manages to inhabit Jennifer Tilly's human body. And Glenn and Glenda possess the twin children, Glenda taking the more of the psychopathic murderous traits and Glenn being more of a good boy and a bit of a mama's boy. Film ends with a birthday party for the children where Glenn opens a birthday present from an anonymous source which turns out to be Chucky's severed arm which springs to life and grabs him as Chucky's infamous laugh is heard as the screen fades to black. All in good fun, and eh, a bit of gets a bit oddball, but seems like well, Chucky loses again. However, his family has gotten what they want. We would then jump nine years for the sixth installment and the first direct-to-video film in the series, which was Curse of Chucky. Now, with this one. Mancini decided to go more back to the straight horror approach used in the first couple Child's Play films, although keeping the Chucky bannering instead of trying to awkwardly name it like Child's Play 4 or Child's Play 6, pretend, you know, and establishing some kind of retroactive titling for the two of Chucky films. Good call. We have enough title craziness issues with the Fast and the Furious franchise. In Curse of Chucky, which does take place like every other film except for three, in real time, and therefore is nine years after the event of the previous films, 
The Chucky dolls delivered to the family home of Nika and Sarah Pierce, where Chucky terrorizes and kills the family one by one. It is eventually revealed that this is a revenge killing by Chucky, as Sarah was one who called the police on him while he was still human. That led to his original death and the events of the entire franchise. And Detective Mike... Uh, yes with Detective Mike Norris and the Barclays. Uh, Nika survives, but is institutionalized and blamed for the murders. And proving that this was not some kind of soft reboot or retconning of the franchise, it is confirmed that the events of Bride and Seed of Chucky still happened, as in the epilogue, we do see Chucky retrieved by the human Tiffany. who then transfers his soul into family member Alice. Six months later, Chucky is then mailed to his next victim, who is revealed to be none other than Andy Barclay, who, as a adult, is ready for Chucky after having kept track of his shenanigans in Bride and Seed, manages to, in fact... Catch Chucky by surprise and flip that script, catching Chucky with a shotgun to the head. Now the good news is, folks, Andy Barclay is once again voiced by Alex Vincent in a wonderful continuity nod. The original actor returning for this cameo. as well as photographs of both his mother, Karen Barclay, and his foster sister, Kylie. We now get to the second direct video film and the seventh overall of the franchise, as well as the most recent in the main timeline. Yes, we're going to talk about the reboot here, but super quick. First, though, we are going to discuss Cult of Chucky. Produced in 2017, and once again, the fictional world is aging in real times, as it is set in 2017, four years after Curse of Chucky. After Chucky's head was shot off by Andy, and remaining still alive, Andy tortures it with a flamethrower. Meanwhile, Nika is at the mental institution and meets some of the patients there, as a new good guy doll arrives completely unharmed with a new head, body, and all, restoring the original unscarred look of Chucky, where it is revealed to actually be Chucky. In a swerve after much death and shenanigans, we find out, and yes, this is a big plot spoiler, but I kind of have to do it, Chucky has managed to increase his voodoo magic skills and can now share his soul across various bodies. Andy Barclay shows up after realizing this to try and save the day, but is himself finally defeated by Chucky. And the film ends with Nika being possessed by Chucky, giving him a human form. Although, again, if Chucky was had already transferred his soul into Alice. I don't know why he needs to transfer his soul into Nika. Um, I'm, I would have to go back and rewatch Cult of Chucky, which, mm, frankly put, I don't want to do. I'll get into that into the wrap up where I give more of my personal stances on the different movies. I'm just gonna say right here, right now, I consider Cult of Chucky to be one of the lower tier movies in the franchise. However, in the post credit scenes, the severed head version of Chucky is still seen in Andy's cabin, now watched over by Kylie, revealing that before Andy went to the institution to try to deal with the alternate body Chucky's, she, Andy had sent Kylie to go check in on Chucky, or possibly implying he escaped the institution and did not die, as the movie tried to make us assume. Again, the scene can be just kind of taken either way. 
and she manages to take over the torture sessions of the Chucky Prime head. This is the end of the classic installment. We have a reboot that was released in 2019. It is a remake of the original 88 film. <sighs> God, I hate this film. The basics of it is that instead of a soul of a serial killer possessing a classic doll that a man, a man working on the programming and manufacturing line of AI computer chip based interactive dolls gets fired and in a fit of rage removes various safety protocols as well as injecting computer virus into the AI which causes one the one particular doll he was working on to eventually become homicidal after being exposed to fictional violence in the various entertainment it watched on TV along with this version of Andy. Yada, yada, yada. Crazy cyber doll with a bad virus and AI. Eh. Kills lots of people. Is eventually beaten, although it is implied that the crazy AI managed to transfer some of its essence into a different good guy doll, setting up a potential sequel. As of right now, though, it looks like there will be no sequel to the remake timeline. Thank God. As, hence why we're doing this now, and why I said it's very thematic and well-timed to be discussing this on this particular day, and I hope you're watching it within a couple days of it being posted, I'm not watching it the day, this video hit the internets because in a few days on Tuesday, October 12th, a Chucky TV series will air on USA and Sci-Fi Channel, still written by Don Mancini. And will feature Jennifer Tilly reprising her role as Tiffany, along with various other actors. It has also been confirmed that Alex Vincent and Christine Elise, now Christine Elise McCarthy, will reprise their roles as Amy Barclay and Ky Kylie. I keep wanting to say Kyle because the way it's spelled. There's no extra I, but I'm sure it's pronounced Kylie because that's generally a feminine way to pronounce it. Again, if I've been wrong, I'm sorry. I haven't seen Child's Play 2 in like 15 years. But that is the fun of it all. The series will be in the continuity of the original timeline and will run over 10 episodes. So I can't really review it, can't discuss much about it because it hasn't aired yet, but it is the immediate future of Chucky. The Chucky doll also appeared in the late 90s on an episode of WCW Nitro to promote the Bride of Chucky film and has been a mainstay of the Universal Halloween Horror Nights event that take place every fall at Universal Studios theme park including having the starring role a couple years. So, I'm going to inject my personal opinions and recommendations in this. Don't bother with the remake. Don't. It's no Fun. There's no evil serial killer ghost. There's no transferring of souls. It's just another crappy sci-fi horror AI goes bad trope disguised as Chucky. It's nonsense. It's no fun. Me. Me. It is the It is the bottom of the basement. Right about that, we're gonna put Cult of Chucky for the fact that A. <sighs> I really don't like horror movies taking place in menstrual institutions. I understand the idea of the different cells and dealing with personalities that are already suffering from mental health issues. Gives it a sense of claustrophobic paranoia, which in theory is good for a horror film, but it's overdone and it's tropey. And more importantly, the fact that we're getting away from Chucky wanting one human body because that's all curse will allow him to and that's all he's been seeking since the original curse kicked in 
being downplayed by him getting a human body but still also having a body and a doll and having multiple Chucky dolls running around committing murders while Chucky Prime was still being tortured by Andy and eventually Kylie. It's just, it's too much. It's too much. It overpowers Chucky. Mm. It's not as bad as the remake, but it's still, I'm sorry. It kind of hints that Mr. Mancini is starting to run out of ideas. It doesn't give me a lot of hope for the TV series if it's supposed to be following this continuity. My personal hope is like maybe it's, uh, you know, they kind of pull back that power set from Cult of Chucky or have it take place between Curse and Cult so we don't have to deal with that power, but it just it overpowers Chucky as a character. So from there, we're going to go bottom up to Seed of Chucky. As I said, Seed of Chucky gets a little weird. It gets a little oddball. There's some squinky scenes in it. Before mentioned turkey baster thing and just the whole nature of the oh do we you know which parent wants to retire and be you know raise a good family which parent wants to continue to be psychotic do the parents even like each other anymore it's just it's it's uh, it's family drama we don't need and the whole thing where we have Glenn and then it's like there's secretly Glenda who's the murderous one. And it's the, the one body and the flipping, you know, uh, symbolic disassociative identity disorder. Uh, what people who don't follow psychology circles would know is multiple personality disorder. The term was changed uh, many years ago to disassociative identity disorder, or did for short. MPD is a kind of play, uh, archaic term that's not really nice to use anymore. I do know that much. Then after that, um, I'm going to go three. Again, you changed actors. You brought in a new kid. It's It, it worked as an end to the classic trilogy, and if that had been the last Chucky film, it would probably be ranked a little bit higher, but I'm sorry. Curse... Of Chucky and Bride of Chucky, which I'm going to put right about even, do beat out Child's Play 3. Uh, Curse of Chucky was a great throwback to the original Child's Play film. Brought us, while I have nothing against the dark humor aspect of Bride and Seed of Chucky in and of themselves, it was good to see Chucky get back to his roots and go back to a simple plot of one doll against a family. Good times. Uh, Bride of Chucky, as I said, was the breath of fresh air that the franchise needed. I enjoy the character of Tiffany in and of herself, but there's a reason the films are not called Chucky and Tiffany. Chucky is still the main guy. He needs a little time to himself. Tiffany working as a supporting character and a cameo at the end works better. Um, the which is what we saw in Curse. But since Bride of Chucky was her debut, she did need some good screen time to establish her character. As well as it filling in some background information on who Charles Lee Ray was as a mortal human. So, then we go, this next should be obvious, Child's Play 2, and at the top, Child's Play 1. Both are excellent horror movies in their own right. Both are great to watch during the Halloween season. I highly recommend both movies. Um, ultimately, my biggest problem with most of the films is them continuing to use the phrase voodoo magic and voodoo rituals because, well, it's, it's not the most respectful treatment of the real life voodoo, which is a legitimate uh, belief system practiced by a lot of people who are not murderous and psychotic, which they try to touch on with the original mentor in the original film, not really being very thrilled with Charles E. Ray's serial killing and him wanting to jump bodies to save himself from death. But in the end, no, the real life voodoo belief system will not 
teach you how to transfer your soul into dolls so you can be a magical being that can then subsequently jump back into separate human bodies. That's not voodoo. But, eh, it was the late 80s. It was a thing. I just really hope they quit using the term voodoo and just kind of treat it more as a generalized, non-real belief system-based black magic out of respect for people who are practitioners of voodoo in real life and are not murderous psychos or body swapping non-consensual abusers of physical flesh especially adults trying to get into the bodies of children some weird pedophilic metaphors there we don't like weird pedophilic metaphors all in all, though, as I said, except for the remake, none of the films are 100% don't recommend. I'm looking forward to what the TV series may bring to the mythology and if it does bring it up after the disappointing cult of Chucky. If you disagree with me, like, comment, and subscribe. But, no matter what, before you disagree with me, please watch the movies. Let's have an intellectual discussion about it if you want to discuss it. Because that's what we do here at Roulette Productions. As I said, I have a lot of respect for the Chucky franchise as a whole. The, case, the core character of Chucky is excellently done. Brad Dorff does a tremendous job voicing the character and giving it incredible personality and malevolence. It's just some of the things Brad and Chucky have been asked to do and work with have not always been top tier. Still, we're going to be back for three more weeks of Halloween fun, culminating in a special Halloween game stream, which you're going to want to see. I know you're watching the rambling, but as people who long time watch this channel know, I do do a game stream every Tuesday. I've been running a supernatural themed game stream for that, and it will cover all the Tuesdays in October for Sunday, October 31st has a special bonus game stream for the second second year in a row because that's how we roll around here. We can't do all this Halloween countdown and not do anything for Halloween. That would be crazy. Still, join me next time. I may or may not have thunder in the background. But no matter what, I will be here. I will ramble. I will help turn you on to new entertainment or help you recall old entertainment you haven't watched in a while. So, Go cozy up with Chucky, and if you survive the experience, come back next Friday. Bye-bye. Stay safe.